What's up, everybody? Jay Leone, back here today. Um, back today with another review, actually a little sooner than I expected to do this review. But I got it in a couple days ago, and I've just been ecstatic with what we're going to be looking at. And before we get into this, I hope the lighting is better. Please let me know. Um, the last video came out really yellowish. I had this light up, my ceiling fan on, and <clears throat> I learned a little bit about lighting, and the light's got to be in front of you. Most people probably already knew that, but I didn't. So I have a lamp right here with the light facing like over here, and for some reason it just looks really good to me at least. Um, well, it looks better than it did. Uh, my face is a little whitewashed from the light, but it's not facing me. The light's facing that way, but it seems a lot better in my opinion. Um, get the rambling out of the way. So that's fixed, the lighting, I believe. The audio should be okay. I am going to get a new um, camera. I'm actually going to get a camcorder for better recording so I can shoot videos all around the house instead of having to be stationed here at this desk with that stupid window behind me. Sorry, a little out of breath. Um, but anyways, we're doing a review, like I said, a couple days earlier because A, I'm ecstatic about this product we're going to look at, and B, I'm um, going to be busy coming later in this week, so I figured I'll shoot the review a little early, so you might not see me for a week, a week and a half after this video, but I'll be back with more exciting things, and we're going to try something a little different. We'll see how it works. If it doesn't work, we won't do it. Um, after, after every month, I usually do four-ish reviews. Four, I try to shoot for at least four reviews a month. Um, if I don't do four, it's due to either money, um, money, <laughs> time, uh, vacations, etc., uh, but this month, after I do my said three or four reviews a month that I do, at the end of the month or the end of those reviews, I'm going to do like a, not a vlog, because everybody's doing vlogs. I mean, you can call it a vlog if you want to. It's going to be me um, basically going back and looking at everything I looked at previously. So not everything, but what I looked at previously that month. So the three or four items I reviewed that month. We're going to go back and just do a quick touch base with everything, see how everything's been working, if I still recommend it or if I still don't recommend it, if anything's changed and whatnot, just so I have progress reports for everybody to know. Because a lot of times I get these things, I hear them go in review, and then later on, um, not so much. I don't use them anymore, and there's reasons behind that. So we're going to try to do that. We'll see how that works. If, if that is something that you're interested in seeing, please let me know. I mean, it's going to happen. If they, people don't watch them, I'm just not going to do them. Um, yeah, so that's that. Uh, but anyways, enough rambling. Let's get on to what this thing is in my hand. Not the Aspire Nautilus Mini that's sitting on top of it. We're actually reviewing a mod today, and a mod I'm very fond of. Mm. Today we're going to be looking at this little fucker. This little fucker. Uh, it is the Elite Eye Stick. So, today we're looking at something that's, uh, you know, interesting, um, different. Um, not all about the high wattage uh, bonanza that's going on out there in the vape world right now. Um, this is a very interesting product. Not interesting, but it, it's unique. I mean, everything's coming out that's coming out is bigger, um, more wattage, boxy. Box mods seem to be the thing right now, actually. Box mod uh, bonanza, I would call it, is going on. So yeah, this is in our box mod, but this is not a box made mod box mod. Box mod for those uh, people chasing clouds and sub ohm builds and whatnot. This comes from E Leaf. It's called the Eye Stick. We're gonna take a look down close here. Um, it's this little fucker right here, and I keep saying fucker. It is a tiny little bastard. Now I'm saying bastard. Um, just one of those days. Um, so yeah, you can see how tiny it is. You can't really judge this. I've seen some other reviews. Uh, Twisted 420 did a review on this just recently, and in the review, you don't realize how tiny it is. Um, yeah, it's tiny. You have to actually hold this in your hand to explain or see how tiny it is, and we'll look how tiny it is more later. So yeah, where I got this and how much it was, I got it from an eBay seller. Um, I'll post the link up over here in this corner, and I'll post it down below also. Um, I bought it off eBay, and I believe the guy that has an eBay store also has a store out in Washington or New York. 
I don't know which one, but somewhere over there. I should get my facts straight, but somewhere over there. Uh, 36 bucks, 35.99, free shipping. Very, very reasonable price for this. I see them as low as I think 33 or 32 bucks, but those are pre-orders. This guy has it in stock and with free shipping, no waiting time. And literally ordered it on Friday and I received it um, like Tuesday, I believe. And Monday was a holiday, so yeah, very fast shipping, no issues with the uh, vendor. I would definitely recommend ordering from them, and I'll put their links below. Uh, 36 bucks, like I said, 36 bucks for this little guy. Cannot beat that. That is a great price. Um, for what you get, 36 bucks isn't bad. But let's take a look down low, and let's see actually what you do get for 36 bucks. All right, so here is the ice stick from e Leaf. This is the packaging it comes in, and from when I got the package in here, I actually thought this was the actual size of the unit, which it definitely isn't. Um, that picture actually would match up perfectly in size with an MVP. But that's why I thought the size of this was going to be. I believed it was going to be small, but you have to really believe me when I say it is small. Um, packaging, we'll go over real quick. Um, I got black. They have it in blue, red, which looks like a pink, and a silver. Um, it says E-Leaf here on the side, E-Leaf on this side, iStick, E-LeafWorld.com. And on the back, you have um, you have the scratch and check also. I think uh, Kanger's doing that also, where you can scratch and you get the QR or the little code to see if it's an authentic E-Leaf product. Uh, made in China, manufactured by iSmoka. I've actually heard of iSmoka. Um, they made some really made say, bad stuff um, that I've seen. Um, and here it just got some info about the company, I believe. Yeah, about I stick, about E Leaf. Sorry, there's a lot of companies in China named after Leaf. E Leaf. There's Green Leaf, which did the 722. So yeah. Anyways, again, rambling. And here's the unit. Um, again, it's gonna be hard to tell how small this is. But when I got this, I was like, what? I mean, I have the specs in the little uh, spec sheet inside here, which I'll get to some specs for you later. But if I can get this little bastard, all right. Here she is. Here is the uh, the e leaf, the e leaf, the eye stick. It's in my camera right there. Um, God, it's just so small. I wonder how they got it. Okay, thank God for warranties. <laughs> you get this also. This is actually called the Simple Pack, um, which is thirty six. You can get a kit. Which comes with, I believe, the USB charger and a wall charger and a wall adapter for that USB charger. So if you don't have any, I have tons of them, so I, I got to just to get the the actual unit. And this um comes with an Ego adapter, so different. It's got like uh, it's got some knurling here. Uh, it's 510 down here, obviously, and it's an Ego adapter, so you could actually screw this on. It's got the knurling, so it makes it easier to screw on. And you can pop on, a, I don't know, an EVOD, uh, anything that's Eagle connected, uh, Eagle connected, anything with Eagle connections. No, um, there you go. Yeah, looks pretty nice actually. It's nice that that comes with it. I don't actually think I have any more Eagle adapters. I've lost them all. So you get that, and that's pretty much it. If we lift up this little tab here, there we go. Then. If you did order the full kit, you would get the charger and the wall adapter in here. You get this little manual. I'm kind of just going to read over something real quick with you. The first of the manual, you can tell it's not written by an American. Um, it's 75 millimeters in size, in height. Uh, according to the manual, I don't know if that's correct or not, but I think so because, uh, yeah, it's a little bit taller than, yeah, okay, it is. It's 75 millimeters in height, and it says 21 millimeters in diameter. Which, I don't know if they're talking about the top part here, but if they are, it's not. Because uh, this is an Aspire Nautilus Mini. And if it was 21 millimeters, maybe it's 21 millimeters over here on this side. Maybe that's what they're talking about. Anyways, let me not get too caught up on this manual here. Um, and it's a 2200 milliamp hour battery in this little guy. 2200 milliamp hour. I think that's what the MVP had in there, if I'm not mistaken. It was a 2200 milliamp in there also. But this is a lot smaller than the MVP. Excuse me while I did all around with this focus. So yeah, 2200 milliamp hour. I believe there would be lipo packs, but I could be wrong, and it could just be a 
battery solder, an 18650 battery solder in there because if you look at an 18650 here. Let me get the stuff out of the way, excuse me. Too much shit in my way. Now, if you look at an 18650 battery, let me line these up for you. You can see that actually the 18650 battery is shorter than it. So that that's a good size comparison. It's a, maybe a couple, a couple millimeters taller than a uh, 18650. There you go. You can see that there. So yeah, I, and uh, trying to get some things that are comparable in size. I mean, the closest thing I have for you is an MVP, unfortunately. And get those in camera, not off of camera. There's an MVP next to it. You can tell it's a lot smaller. Here is a uh, even bigger box. Well, actually, no, it's about the size of an MVP. The Hanna clone um, right here. So there you go. You can see how small this is. I mean, look at that. <laughs> Diameter wise. There you go. And I mean, it's on one end, it's rounded. So it's not going to be square on both sides, which actually makes it comfortable to hold. We'll talk about that. That size. Um, and now let's actually look at the product itself. Let me, um, let me zoom in a little bit here. Let's look at the 510 connector. And let's sure up this focus just a bit. Okay. And I don't know what that 510 connection is, to be honest with you, if it's gold plated or it's probably it's probably brass or copper. It's not copper, it's probably brass. It's probably silver brass plated oh my god. It's probably just plated brass. Um and it does have these slots here on the side, which you can see up here. They are for airflow, obviously. So if you do some get some air from the five if you do get your Devices with air from the 510, you'll be able to get that from here. That's what I'm trying to say in the elongated version. Um, like I said, it's rounded here. It's stainless steel up here. It's very shiny up here. Kind of like the first MVP. The second MVP, they changed it to this brushed look. But it's kind of like that first MVP where it had that. It has two little screw heads here. I haven't taken it apart. I'm not going to take it apart, but you can if you want to. It will avoid the warranty, they say. Um, you got a fire button up here. Very clicky fire button. Very clicky. I like it. Very shiny button also. Down here, you're going to have um, up and down for your wattage. And again, very clicky. These buttons are really small. It's nice to see some different kind of buttons. And I like these buttons. All three of these buttons are very nice. Uh, different than these little dinkers that are on the Hannah here. I hate those. So small. Um, and on the bottom, again, they chose to go on the bottom. I'd say this is the one con this thing has. is the USB charger charging port on the bottom. I don't know why. On the bottom, you can see there's two more screws here, a USB port, and then some logoing here or some markings. Um, yeah, and that's really as far as aesthetics. It's rounded on this side, and then it's you know it's got eye stick over here down at the bottom. And then you flip it over, you got your screen which is here. It's kind of smoked out, so you can't see it when it's off, which I kind of like. And then it says E leaf on the other side, right there. As I got it upside down, he leaked right there. That's, I mean, the device itself. There's not too much to it. As far as how the menu works, uh, it's going to go from really low. Two watts. My fault. Two watts. It goes to two watts, and it goes all the way up to 20 watts. Which, um, to show you that, you could actually, to go fast on this, you hold the up button. And then it'll start scrolling on its own. You hit the up button again, then it'll start scrolling by twos. You hit the up button again, it'll start scrolling by half a watt. So that's the way to get up there as quick as you can. And it goes up to 20 watts. So now if you want to go down, you hold down, start scrolling, hit down again, start scrolling by twos, hit down again, it'll start scrolling by half a watt. So that's a key to go up and down. Now to do the between it does do variable wattage and voltage. It's three clicks. One, two, three. There it goes. Now it says voltage. So you can go from three volts, I believe. Yeah, three volts. And you can go all the way up to 5.5, I believe. You can just hold it, like I said. Yeah, so three volts to five volts. So it doesn't have no crazy, you know, voltage ranges on here. But and for a little guy like this to be able to do 20 watts, it's awesome. Now, in order to do 20 watts, you must have the right build in here. Because, for instance, let's grab... And by the way, that's the menu system. Five clicks on-off to turn it on and off, just so you know. 
It's one, two, three, four, five. Or if I didn't do it right, there it goes five, and it just goes off. That's it. Let's turn it back on. You do one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, here it goes. And it's on. There's no logoing or nothing that pops up on the screen. That's it. There's no locking on here. Just you know, up, down, fire, turn it on and off. That's it. That's. By the way, the screen stays on for about 10 to 15 seconds from what I've measured. Or so anyways, it's 1.9 ohms right now. And it's below that, it tells you the wattage it's giving you at 5.5 volts, which is 15. And then obviously, it's got a battery life indicator there. So it's very similar to the HANA. Um, let's switch it over to... I'm doing this wrong. Wattage. 3... There it goes. It's a little slow. Alright, so with this 1.9 ohm coil, it's only going to let me go up to 15.9 watts. It will not let me go past that. And the reason is it's because it's hit its limitation. It can only do 5.5 volts. So for a 1.9 ohm coil, the highest you're going to be able to go is 15.9. So if you had something like a... Uh, maybe a one and a half and lower by the way this will only fire atomizers from one to three ohms so from one ohm if you have a one ohm on there you'll be able to fire it all the way up to 20 and 1.2 you probably fire it up to 20 but as soon as you start getting those little bit of a higher ohms you're not going to be able to take it all the way up so just to know it's going to let you know what it can fire it's not going to just throw numbers at you and think you're firing at those wattages um, and as far as how low you can fire it you can only fire it down to three volts so if we let this go here, I'll t it'll, sh it'll stop. One, there we go, 4.7 watts. That's the lowest it's going to fire. We'll not fire anything lower on a 1.9 ohm. Now, it all depends on the ohms of whatever you're using on that um, device. I back out a bit. So that's that's how that works. That's, you know, fires 1 to 3 ohms, uh, 3 to 5.5 volts, and 2 to 15, uh, 20 watts for this little guy. Um, I mean, as far as looks on it, that's all I can really show you. One thing I want to mention is this Aspire Nautilus Mini is an 18, di 18 millimeter in diameter, and it does overhang. You could probably see that there just slightly. Uh, I wish it didn't do that, but you know what? For such a small device, it's the small, small price to pay for that. If we put something big on here, though, I'll sh it does look ridiculous. But I mean, that's what you get when you get a small device. Here's a 20 millimeter Russian. It will work on there. Um, it it just looks preposterously big. It's overhanging on, actually, not overhanging on the sides all that much, but it's overhanging like a little bitch on this side. Yeah, quite a bit. Actually, it doesn't look that so, bad. So yeah, um, that was the close up of it, as you saw with the Russian on there. It looks a little wonky, but you can use a Russian can use a K fun you can use anything you want on here really I mean it even comes with the ego adapter so you could use that too uh, yeah I mean it will fire anything down to an ohm so an ohm and up you'll be fine this is not for you know sub ohms and when that only goes to 20 watts so you're not gonna get much if you even want to use sub ohms on there you could build a one ohm, a one ohm, <laughs> one ohm coil Actually, I'm going to do that on my Atomic, because my Atomic's an 18 millimeter di diameter uh, dripper. I'm going to build a 1 and higher ohm, maybe like a 1.5 ohm uh, coil on there and put it on here and see how it looks. Because um, so, you can rock it up to 20 watts. 1 ohm at 20 watts would be a very, very satisfying vape. But a few things I forgot to mention in the close ups were it has a 10 second cutoff, so you can fire it for 10 seconds and then it will cut off. And a few of the uh, menuing, menuing, one of the things that it says when there's no atomizer on there, it just doesn't give you a random ohm. It'll tell you um, no atomizer. Obviously, you won't be able to see it, but it does say no atomizer when I press the fire button, nothing on there. And it does read zero ohms. Like some of the China chips, they're, um, they're reading, I think it's, what is it, two and a half ohms. If there's nothing on there, it just says two and a half ohms. It throws that at you for some reason. Holding this thing is just awesome. I mean, this is how I'm holding it. Basically can't see the mod at all. All I'm seeing is my Aspire Nautilus Mini on top. And, uh, yeah, with the fire button right here. So I just kind of, the roundish portion right into my thumb here. Boom, boom, and I just kind of fire with this part of my finger here. I think I just changed it to, no. A great vape. 
been taking it to work. Actually, I used it all day yesterday, and I used it all day today at work. And this is kind of pointless to show you because you can't see. Oh, you kind of see it. There you go. My battery has barely moved. There's a, a little chunk missing out of it right there. And that was all day yesterday and a good six and a half hour shift at work today using this little this little bugger. Little bugger. So that's been great. Holding it's great. I mean, like I said, that roundish portion kind of just boom. You can hold it like that. Sometimes I do, or I like to usually hold it with my thumb around the round area and then boom and then the trigger button right there. So it's very comfortable to hold. It's small. I mean, here's a eight uh twenty six six fifty battery and here's it. I mean, the 2660 battery is actually thicker than this device. So, just to get an idea of the size of it. So, yeah, it has a 10 second cutoff. Um, what else did I forget? Charging port on the bottom here. And, uh, yeah, overall, it's just, it's just a great little device. I do recommend this. This is actually a setup that I'd be recommending to all new vapors. Anybody who wants to try vaping, this is what you should start off on right here. I know it doesn't look like a cigarette. But I'm telling you, the battery life is fantastic. The range from 1 ohm to 3 ohms and freaking 2 watts to 20 watts. That's just a fantastic range. There are one thing I would like to change about this is if they actually move the 510 here. So actually the 510, and one thing, uh, one other thing I didn't mention. I'm all over the place today, by the way. Just a lot. One other thing I want to mention is this uh, 510 contact is not spring-loaded or anything. So I would like to see this be spring-loaded, especially for... If this is a new person using this and, you know, they're having issues making connection, they're wondering, oh, it's not working or something, because it does happen. If that was spring-loaded, we'd fix some of those issues. Fortunately, the uh, Nautilus Mini has that kind of spring-adjusting 510 on it, so it connects on everything perfectly. But actually, what they should do, in my opinion, this is one of my negatives, is the 510 here should be moved over to here, in the center of this round area. So your atomizer would be sitting um, eh here-ish because of that round portion it would just everything nothing would overhang you have more space on this side so you'd get no overhang if the 510 was actually here because it's round instead of being you know square like this side so if they could I don't know if it's possible because I know it's a small box already if it's possible to move the 510 over this device would be perfect that and the spring loaded 510 would be great I mean I have a feeling they're gonna make a 30 watt version of this uh, 30 watts, I could see. And I don't know what chip's in here. You know what? Let me do a little research because I want to see if I can find it out for you guys. Give me one second. I'll be right back. Yeah, so I'm not finding any information on what kind of chip it is. It looks like an SS330 chip, but an older version of the chip. Maybe a newer version of the chip because this chip actually, um, the Hannah clone uses the SX330 chip. Um, and the screen is blue. On this one, the screen is like a, I don't know, white. It's a white color or whatever on the the lettering and also this one has you know it displays the no atomizer symbol and it says no atomizer that thing doesn't have that little logo there so they added that little thing on it obviously this does voltage and wattage which the sx330 doesn't do voltage and uh yeah so i'm not sure i, I guess it's an sx330 chip but don't quote me on that i think this chip's more well-rounded than that chip because also another thing i really enjoy about this is you press that fire button instant vape. There's no, oh, wake it up, wait for the Hanna logo to come up or whatever, and then vape. Just instant power. So I love from the moment you press that fire button, you're vaping. You're not waiting to take it out of sleep mode and whatnot. That's a great plus on these. Also, also, I did not mention, let's see if we can show this to you guys. It does have this for those who are interested in the actual puff counter per se. So as I'm vaping there, it's counting. It's counting the seconds your, your seconds of your drag. Let me let me sure up this focus. I doubt I can get it to focus. Screens are my weak point. Oh, well, there's as good as you're gonna get. So there you go. And you can see it's counting there. It's got a little puff indicator and it counts the seconds. It doesn't count the puffs, it counts the second of your puffs. So Two point four two seconds that drag was. So it does tell you that also, if you'd like to know that. I've covered everything I can remember about this device. Oh, it does have one last last couple of things actually. And things keep coming to me. It does have um, 
step down. So, I mean, I, you could take this down all the way to 3 volts. Unlike the DNA chips, you cannot take them below, I believe, 3.7 or 4 volts. Could be wrong, but you can't. And on these, you could actually take it all the way down to 3 volts. So, if, for those that don't want that that ridiculous high wattage of 4 volts all the time, you can take this down, down to 3. It does let you know when the battery is low. Um, when it gets to 3.3, it will not fire. It will lock up, actually. So it's got that. It's got short tr circuit protection. It's got all the protections you're going to need for a regulated device. Overall, I'm done talking about this because I've said enough. I highly recommend this. Three thumbs up if I can have another thumb um, on this device. It's just great. I recommend if you're looking for something stealthy, portable, you're new to vaping, get yourself an Aspire Nautilus Mini and a E-Leaf iStick, and you will be good for days. For days? It'll be good for a while. And on that note, I will tell you, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to the link down below. And until next time, which, by the way, next time we will be starting our first vlog slash update slash what's been working videos, uh, the next video, in a week and a half. Taking a little extra time because I have some stuff going on this weekend, so I apologize. And I'm rambling. So once again, thank you all for watching. Live well. Stay on. And I'm bringing, no, it's only the beginning. Oh, I'm not bringing, I'm in.